Egyptologist astronomer Dr. Salman Hamid, Mr. Universe, with some kitchen table astronomy here at your kitchen table in Amherst. A little teaser. Next week's episode, we're going to do the Barbenheimer review. <laughs> I'm going to go see Barbie and Oppenheimer, and you're at least going to go see Oppenheimer, and we're going to talk about the horrors of nuclear technology and nuclear war, and also Barbie. And also the horrors of Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> Not without its horror. And we'll find out which one is more destructive overall for human society. <laughs> yeah, no, I think we're really looking forward to uh, to see both of those, actually. Oh, yeah, although, they're both, they look like they're both going to be fantastic. Although, most likely, we will just talk about Oppenheimer. That's true. Which is sad. Yeah. Sad. But that's I'll keep interjecting little Barbieisms in the whole thing. But today we're talking about some exciting developments in the world of space travel from not the United States. Yes, so this past Friday... India launched a mission to the moon. Uh, it's um, not crewed mission, but it is. Uh, uh, it, it's a mission crewed with a C R E W, -E <laughs> yes. not meaning C R U D. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Although you know, between Pakistan and India, you know, who knows? Like you know, what is it, how it is interpreted? Uh, but this is a pretty cool mission. So India has sent uh, Chandrayaan one. This was, uh, I think, in two thousand and nine or so. And uh, it was an orbiter. Uh, it was, um, Chandrayaan, by the way, means moon craft in Hindi. Uh, and that mission actually helped discover, or like, sort of like with other spacecrafts as well, uh, water on the lunar south pole. And we have talked about it before that on the moon, the discovery of water has really changed the way people have been thinking about having settlements there. So in the south pole, in the shadows of craters now we know there is water ice and right now the plans are for the u.s and china at least and others as well uh, to have uh, lunar settlements around that place because of this discovery that was also from chandrayaan one and then uh, a couple of years ago in 2019 um, Indian uh, space uh, organization it's uh, isro or isro they actually uh, sent a spacecraft with a lander there, but that spacecraft went, it had an orbiter as well. So orbiter was inserted successfully, but the lander failed. Uh, and so this mission in some ways is uh, the completion of that. Chandrayaan-3, which got launched um, last Friday, it doesn't have an orbiter because the orbiter is still working, uh, but it has a lander and a small rover as well. Did they get it to work this time? The launch has gone successfully. It's going to take about 40 days to get there. Uh, it's like one of those desert quests, biblical. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 40 days and 40 nights. <laughs> That's right. It's going to take that because, uh, so unlike the Apollo mission, which took a couple of uh, days to uh, get there, uh, the, uh, th this particular mission, it, it's more like fuel efficient. Yeah. And so if you don't have sort of like a really powerful rocket, so how do you get there? So you use the gravity of the Earth. I mean, it's really cool. I mean, if you think about it, these are all things based upon the way gravity works, our understanding of orbits. So basically, it's goes, it goes. it is now in an elliptical orbit around the Earth where it's going to keep on getting in a bigger and bigger elliptical orbit because it's going to keep on getting more and more speed in some sense and momentum from the Earth. And it as it passes by, the spacecraft gives a little bit of its momentum to the Earth, which we don't feel but the Earth gives it a little bit momentum to the spacecraft, which it feels a lot, and so it's going to keep on doing that. It and slingshots. Slingshots, exactly what it is. And, and then it's going to get to the moon, and the same thing, it's going to go on the moon in order to slow down. So it's going to be in the reverse thing, and it's going to be slowing down using that. And then it's going to land. It's expected to land on uh, August 23rd and August 24th, around that time. And it's going to land not exactly in the South Pole, but close to it. And then an orbiter, uh, then the rover is going to expect to come uh, come out, and yeah, and and then it's going to expect to work for about two weeks. And uh, so a lot of these things are about testing technology, testing these things are working or not. Of course, there is science as well, uh, but those things are there. National pride is of course there. Uh, I think it's a it's a big deal, and I think it's it's really cool. We're in the middle of a new space race again surrounding the moon, even though we already did this, but you know, everything old is new again. We've got all of these Indiana Jones movies and things coming out that <laughs> came out 40 years ago, so why not have a whole new space race back towards the moon? 
What are the implications of this globally with so many nations only in some regards working together to explore the moon and outer space? Yeah, I mean, if I can say... Uh it's an interesting time. So previous moon race was about who gets to the moon first. And uh, and the U.S. did, right? Like, you know, and, and so for the Soviet Union, basically it was like, ah, you know, there's no point to it because there was no thought what's going to happen further, how it's going to get established. And in fact, uh, Soviet Union actually changed its emphasis and um, started focusing on Venus. In fact, they are the only ones who have actually landed on Venus. Oh, wow. And so that actually was their focus. They were like, oh, you go to the moon, we'll go to Venus. <laughs> of course, it was a, not a crewed mission. No, the other crew. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, so it wasn't uh, that, but c certainly uh, they focused on that. Now it's different. Now there are a lot of countries that are thinking about using moon as a launching pad to go to mars or asteroids or other things because uh the moon has less gravity so it's easier to launch a rocket off of the moon if you can get there and if there's water in certain locations that can be helpful too right so that is and and of course some people had argued and they still argue uh, including uh elon musk but there, there are others uh, from mars society who argue that we shouldn't go back to the moon, just go directly to Mars. There's a Mars Direct uh, thing. But that's not what's going on. And, Mar and the moon itself has significance and is taking more and more significance. It's not about that you are going to have a huge colony on the moon, but you can have research stations. And as I mentioned, sort of like, you know, so you can use the resources of the moon to potentially build spacecrafts over there also in the orbit. That's what sort of like, you know, plans are for. Uh, and just to give you an idea, so we are going to be talking more and more about the moon in the coming years. But just this year, so Indian mission has just been launched. Russia is launching Luna 25 in August to go to the moon. And their last mission was Soviet Union. It wasn't Russia. It was wow. Soviet Union in 1976. So Luna 24 was in 1976. And now they are sending a mission uh, and then there is uh, another mission, uh, which is from the Japanese uh, space agency. It's called Smart Lander uh, for Investigating Moon or SLIM. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of effort goes into the acronyms. <laughs> and astronomers should learn something from it because so that they don't keep on making very large telescope or extremely large telescope or large binocular telescope and so on and so forth. That's but anyway, they name their telescope. They don't give them any cool names. That's right. So SLIM is, I think, I think it's, uh, it's pretty good. Tokyo and, SLIM. <laughs> sounds like a Tom Waits song. And then uh, you also have a couple of uh, private companies that are sending payload over there. Those are supported by NASA, funded by NASA. And uh, so, for example, one is from Intuitive Machines. Uh, it's uh, a Houston-based company. Wookie! Okay. This duet is with my dog, Wookie. <laughs> so, uh, contributing. He's not going to the moon, unlike some others that were sent and were not so... I like that Russian space dog. What was his name? Laika? Right. Laika, yeah. Oh, so, and then word. the poems about Laika. So. Oh, have you ever seen Kunk on Earth? <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's a Netflix show oh in God. which there was a conversation about that, and it was—it's very funny if you get a chance. The scene to see. about Leica is so funny. So uh, anyway, so anyway, so no, uh, Wookie not going to the moon. Wookie, you're not going to the you're moon. You're going to a galaxy far, far away, <laughs> like other Wookies. So, so that's also going. So there are a lot of missions, and next year China uh, is sending its mission back as well. So coming back, let's close the loop. The Indian space program is now tied closely to the U.S. You were talking about the space race. Obviously, there is a huge realignment also taking place. Um, India has now joined the Artemis program. So Artemis is the U.S.-led uh, effort. Uh, you can think about U.S. allies. And U.S. is developing a framework that uh, has a particular vision of what humans can and cannot do on the moon. The only treaty that everybody has signed, and we've talked about it, Monty, multiple times, but the only treaty that everybody, United Nations aspect, have signed about outer space is called the Outer Space Treaty, and that was signed in 1967 before humans actually <laughs> went to the moon. But it's an idealistic treaty which said sort of like, you know, that no 
nation can own a piece of heavenly body and if you use it it should be for benefit of all and so and so forth uh, and there are a lot of questions about what happens in a <clears throat> very capitalist system for example and so there is there are newer interpretations including from the US which argues that well of course it doesn't belong to anyone but we can use it right for private purposes and so uh, or we can use resources from the moon and so 27 nations have signed on to it and the number is increasing over the period of time significantly China and Russia have not signed onto the Artemis Treaty. Uh, China argues that any treaty that is going to be binding has to go through the United Nations. This treaty is not. So it is going to get litigated as well, uh, but India just signed on to it. Now, China, the, the other thing I should mention between India and China is that if this mission is successful, Chandrayaan-3, which is on its way to the moon, it will be... Uh, the only nation after China for the last, basically in this century, uh, in the 21st century, to have successfully sent a lander on the moon and a rover. Uh, and uh, we have talked about Chinese uh, Chang'e missions. Uh, one of them actually went to the far side of the moon, first time ever landing. And then uh, I think two years ago, there was another mission uh, that went uh, and brought samples back from the moon the first time Samples have been brought back since the Apollo time, and that was Chang'e 5. So this is all part of the larger context. More and more nations are going to go. It is, I mean, I hate to say this, but I think it would be foolhardy to say that this is not part of the new space race. It is. We just hope, we were talking about seeing Oppenheimer. So I just hope that this does not turn into space war. And because, again, we are in an uncharted territory of what's going to happen on the moon, partly because there are limited resources, especially water, and it's only or mostly uh, available in the lunar South Pole. Hoping that Oppenheimer is less of the cautionary tale that we will learn from this new space race than Barbie. I think Barbie's going to be a more positive in the Barbenheimer universe way to look at this new space race. I hope, but who knows what Bobby Barbie is going to build. Like, you know, I mean, what kind of bomb Barbie builds. So I will be caution. Uh, I would raise caution about that as well. Barbie is the bomb. Barbie is the bomb. And next week, we'll review Barbenheimer. <laughs>